With this constitutional amendment, Gavin Newsom wants to destroy our gun rights in our own founding documents in a way that we could never undo in a court of law. And you're not going to believe the methodology he wants to use to get this done. Guys, watch this video and join the fight. Hey, guys, Aaron Dorr here. You know, in my 15 years of doing gun politics, I believe that Beto O'Rourke, former congressman from Texas, is perhaps the stupidest politician in American political history, at least in today's generation, if not all time. But I think that we owe Beto O'Rourke a tiny sliver of gratitude because it was dumb Beto who announced on the campaign stage several years ago that, hell yes, we're coming for your AR-15s. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. And that marked the moment, in my opinion, when all pretense was dropped by the radical left and they became very honest with the American people about their goal to systematically disarm the entire American population. We now have a president who restates this every couple of days in the White House. You have tyrants in your state house saying the same thing. But it all began with Beto O'Rourke. And now, besides having Biden in the White House doing this, all of the younger generation of gun grabbers, your radical left governors, your radical left U.S. senators, they are now hell bent on moving that debate more and more to the left every day because they know that if we're arguing over here, we're not arguing about expanding gun rights over here. It's a tactical, intentional decision made by these people. And the most recent iteration of this comes from California Governor Gavin Newsom. Many of you saw this and asked us about this late last week because it was late last week when Governor Newsom came out as he is about to launch a presidential campaign. He's made that very clear. And he called for a 28th Amendment to the United States Constitution. And basically, it would cement the gun grabbers' entire agenda into our nation's founding documents. And I'm going to break down the details of this amendment and the process by which he wants to use this. But it's important to realize, I think, at the very beginning, that for many gun owners, there could be a temptation here when you hear videos like this. You might say, oh, come on, they're never going to modify the Constitution. They're never going to pass an assault weapons ban in Congress. They're never going to have the courts end the Second Amendment. And as long as that generation of gun owners thinks that way, they will remain checked out of the fight for gun rights. In my opinion, that's the wrong approach to make because these people on the radical left are very patient. They don't care about your guns. They don't care about my guns. They care about disarming our children and our grandchildren. And they're willing to put in a process in place like a constitutional amendment, for example, to do exactly that. Because, again, they're patient and they don't so much care about disarming this generation as long as they get to disarm a generation of Americans and they can then impose the draconian tyranny they've always wanted to do. So we must stay engaged. We need to stay engaged in this fight. Now, getting back to Gavin Newsom. So Gavin Newsom, for those who don't know, is the most woke, most self-loathing governor in America today. His own people hate him. Now, Newsom barely survived the recall election brought by his own people several years ago because of the way he treated them during COVID, the way he's allowed violent crime to go out of control, and the way he has, in general, destroyed California. But again, he's about to announce in some way down the road here a run for the White House. Maybe it's this year. Maybe it's down the road. But the guy is obviously gearing up for this. And so to prove how progressive he is when it comes to gun control, He's called for this 28th Amendment. You see, Newsom is angry. It goes back to that self-loathing. He hates himself and he hates all of us because we have stopped the left from passing gun control right now through Congress. They cannot get their agenda, at least right now, and that fight is ongoing, so don't ignore that. At least right now, they cannot pass their gun control agenda in Congress. And after last year's Supreme Court decision on the Bruin decision, they all know they cannot pass gun control via the court process. In fact, right now, we are notching victories in court every other day in circuit courts all across the country. So they can't do it in Congress. They can't do it in court. 
And that's why Newsom has called for an amendment to our United States Constitution. His proposal has four primary tenets. Number one, raise the age on when Americans can buy firearms from the current 18 to 21. So you can fight and be wounded or die for your country in the military when you're 18, when you're 19, when you're 20 in a foreign land. But don't you dare think, son, you have the right to come back to America and buy a Glock 9 to defend yourself until you're 21 years of age. The arrogance on this guy is limitless. Number two, it's going to mandate universal background checks. We all know what this is. The government cannot confiscate what they cannot find. And private party sales of firearms means there's no federal database tracking that transaction. They want to end that in the Constitution of America. Number three, waiting periods for all gun owners. Now, this is where you might be tempted to think, Man, I don't care, Aaron. I've got a, I've got an arsenal. I've got tons of firearms. Well, again, <laughs> that might be. We're talking about the next generation. And if your granddaughter has to live through a mostly peaceful summer like we did in 2020 when radical left rioters burned, shot, and raped their way across America, your granddaughter might want to buy a firearm. And imagine her surprise and imagine her dread if this language were to pass and she has to wait 20 days, 30 days, 60 days to buy a firearm, that's what's at stake. And finally, of course, the big one for the radical left, this will ban all so-called assault weapons. AR-15s and hundreds of similar firearms would be banned in this country forever. So that's what he wants to do in the amendment. Now, they're going to leave the current Second Amendment Intact. That's his whole point, right? We're going to honor the legacy of the Second Amendment while having common sense approaches and solutions to our current gun violence problem. The guy, the guy lies so much, I have to air quote everything this fool says, right? So that's his uh, policy objective. It would summarily destroy our gun rights in this country for forever. Now, Interestingly, the process by which Newsom wants to amend the Constitution is very similar to the way that many well-meaning people in the gun rights community over the years past have proposed trying to protect our gun rights. You see, Newsom has or anybody has two ways to amend the Constitution. First is the congressional route. Both chambers of Congress would have to vote by a two-thirds majority to amend the Constitution. When that happens, it then goes to the states, and the states also need to vote to modify or amend the Constitution. When that happens, then it goes to the people. And, and Gavin Newsom knows right now there is no way to get, to get that done in the current Congress. There's no chance of him doing that. And so instead, Gavin Newsom has proposed an Article 5 convention to modify the Constitution, to amend it with this new amendment directly. And again, the, the irony here is not lost on us. You see, for years, we have publicly opposed the Article 5 Convention of States madness, which, again, well-meaning people, and I want to stress that, well-meaning people, are hoping to use that to stop the government from destroying our fundamental personal liberties like the Second Amendment. We've always opposed that because we have told our members for years that the damage that could be done to our freedom, gun rights, First Amendment rights, all of our freedoms, if we open up the Constitution to being edited, is incalculable. It's incalculable. You know, when Florida passed red flag gun seizures, that was terrible, but that was limited to one state. That law can be and frankly should be undone by Governor DeSantis. It could be sued over in court, and it should be. When other states pass minimum age requirements, it's limited to that state. When a state would pass universal background checks, it's limited to that state. The damage is limited, and it can be undone with a future action by that General Assembly, or it can be sued over. But if we open up our Constitution and we allow these radical leftists funded by George Soros directly to have a say in editing or amending our Constitution, the damage is not limited to a single state or a single region. It's not one issue like red flag laws. It is a comprehensive 
destruction of our gun rights that would affect every single person in this country. And the courts would have to uphold it because it would be in our founding documents. It'd be in our constitution. Now, by now, those who still believe in this idea of the Article 5 convention, and to be fair, the issue has kind of died away. We haven't discussed it in a long time here. We haven't had the need to, but we do now. Uh, but to be fair, for those who are watching this now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, come on, you're being dramatic. There's safeguards in place. We could stop them. And to that, I would simply push back and say, really? Really? We have seen gun owners unable to stop city councils from mandating city-level gun control laws, even in red states. We have seen red legislatures take Florida, pass red flag gun seizures by massive majorities. We've been unable to stop that. But somehow we think collectively as gun owners now, supposedly, that we have the power to restrain the entire radical left machine who would go all in on trying to gut our Constitution in an Article 5 convention. No, that's preposterous. That's preposterous. And we can have an academic debate about that. But with the stakes being what they are, there is no scenario where we should be OK with an Article 5 convention of states. And again, it's not just well many people on our side now who are calling for this. The radical left, like Gavin Newsom, is calling for this because he wants to, they want to cement gun control in our national charter. The Planned Parenthood, the pro-abortion space, is also calling for similar action to cement the right to kill unborn babies in our national charter. You see, the radical left knows if they can crack this thing open even this much, they can blow it wide open and pass their entire social agenda in our Constitution. And folks, if they do that, our country will burn to the ground, make no mistake. So... In the meantime, stay involved in this fight. We'll keep you guys informed. Hit the link below. Become a member of the organization today and make sure that we're doing all we can to take our place on freedom's wall to hold the line for our kids and grandkids like our, our forefathers did for us. Guys, share our video far and wide. We'll keep you informed as always and stay free.